Last night at the top of the show, we addressed the removal of Civil War monuments from public places around the country. We made the point that the sudden outrage over Confederate icons isn't entirely about slavery, horrifying as slavery is. It's also part of a larger effort on the left to discredit the founders of this country and the beliefs they enshrined in law. Once you believe that any figure in history who once owned slaves is inherently illegitimate and should be erased, it's hard to take our founding documents very seriously. How can you accept a Bill of Rights when it was written by slave owners? Well, you can't, which is why so many on the left don't and ignore the First and Second Amendments, among many others. That was the point we were trying to make. You may disagree with it, but it didn't seem crazy or mean-spirited. Here's the tweet that Bill Kristol, the former Weekly Standard editor and Fox contributor, sent minutes later referring to our segment last night. Quote, they started by rationalizing Trump. They ended by rationalizing slavery. Rationalizing slavery. That is not even close to what we are saying by any interpretation. What an outrageous thing to say, but it got worse. Just minutes later, Crystal suggested somehow we are anti-Semitic, too. Here's his second tweet. Quote, next, Luther, Voltaire, and Marx were anti-Jewish, so why is it a big deal that the marchers were chanting, Jews will not replace us, end quote? Okay, that is libel, but it's also really stupid. And yet Bill Crystal isn't stupid. I know that because I worked for Bill Crystal for more than five years in the 1990s. I knew him well. He was a genuinely smart guy. He was a good boss, too. He was humane and fair-minded. He was the kind of person I never would have imagined would write something that nasty and dishonest about an enemy, much less an old friend. What happened? Well, Crystal refused to explain himself today, so we can only guess at that. Part of the explanation has to be the moment that we're living in right now, where hysteria has supplanted rational debate where the purpose of political argument is no longer to explain your beliefs, but to highlight what a morally upstanding person you are, what a virtuous guy you are, usually by contrast with your opponent, who is, by definition, evil. It's childish, obviously, but for many people, it's pretty tempting. Even 64-year-old men with Harvard degrees fall for it, apparently. But part of the problem is also the medium. 20 years ago, when Bill Crystal had something to say, he had a magazine to say it in. He talked through ideas with his friends, then he spent hours writing a piece that expressed those ideas precisely. There was thinking involved in the process. Now he just goes on Twitter, and he stays on Twitter all day, every day, dashing off little thoughts and impressions, scoring tiny little points against strangers in cyberspace, keeping obsessive track of his likes and retweets. At an age when he could be playing with his grandchildren, Crystal is glued to social media like a slot machine junkie in Reno. And after a while, of course, that distorts you. When you disagree with someone, it doesn't occur to you to pick up the phone and hash it out. You tweet it, hoping for retweets. It's depressing as hell. Crystal isn't the only one who does this, obviously. Washington is littered with formerly impressive people who now just shout and preen on social media. But I hate to see it with him. I liked Bill Crystal once, and I thought he liked me. What a shame.